Tommy Rance RV here. Today I'm going to talk um, about sway bars and the story about what happened to me with my sway bar and the reason why I'm, I'm kind of committed myself to using it all the time now. I never used it before. Um, and a couple of months ago, um, I've shown on quite a few videos that I went down to Rockport, Texas. And uh, that was in December. Before I went on that trip, I knew it was going to be my longest um, road trip. Because the, the route I took was the long one. And it was like 385 miles, something like that. And uh, about 50 of that was on Interstate I-45. And then the rest of it was state roads and, and stuff. And it was on I-45 that I, I ran into a problem. Um, it got windy. It got real windy. I had my sway bar with me, but I did not have it hooked up. Well, yeah, I think it was, a, I was about almost 40 miles into that 50 mile drive down the interstate. So I was south of Corsicana somewhere. And that wind started picking up. And I mean, it was picking up a crosswind coming out of the um, west, southwest. Um, and so it, it was almost a direct crosswind. And it probably was blowing 30, over 30 miles per hour, I'm going to guess. So I started looking for somewhere to pull over. I considered doing it on the shoulder, and I, I didn't like that. So I was going to try and find a wider area, maybe next to an exit or something and it just so happened i saw a rest area sign it was one of those without facilities but it was a other than that it was a you know big enough for trucks and stuff to park in there um in one line and there and i pulled in there and got my trailer in and the truck and had them lined up straight uh, which you need to do when you're hooking a sway bar up. And it started raining and the wind picked up. I, it must have been, it must have been 50 miles an hour. It, it was, I think it was only like a 20 minute storm, maybe 30. Um, but I did some driving in it. And before that, I, um, you know, I thought this is the time to put the sway bar on. And before I went on the trip, I watched a key video um, and that's the one that the Willful Wanderer did, uh, Bill, from that channel. He hasn't done a video in quite a while, about a year, I think, but he's got a bunch of them on his casita, and they're all relevant. And uh, before a couple of nights before I left, I watched his uh, video on sway and sway bar adjustment, because I knew uh, Bill had a different approach than what the uh, Casita Factory uh, video was. Um, and so watch that video if you really want to get the whole lowdown on how to adjust a Kurt sway bar with your small trailer or casita. Um, you'll get it all there, and he, he does it in a really casual but clear way. And I watched that video and it calmed me down, so I was prepared to put that thing on if I needed it, and turned out I did. The other thing that saved me was that this hat I'm wearing. It's a waterproof um, leather hat. And so it started raining. I was, I didn't get, leave home till about 10 that morning. And I really needed to be down at Shelley's RV park before it got dark. And um, when, so I didn't, I wanted to use every bit of time I had trying to head down there. Even if I wasn't driving, I'm going to have everything lined up. And so, as it worked out, raining like a madman, I got out of the truck, I put this hat on, took my glasses off because they were going to just be in the way. And I hooked that sway bar up. And using Bill's advice, I tightened that thing quite a bit more uh, than what the, the Casita Factory video says. They say, you know, turn that bar around until you feel a little tension and then go another half turn. No, nah, I needed more than that. So I did that. 
got back in the truck dripping, dripping wet all over, draining the hat off, <laughs> wiping the water off of me everywhere, um, and got ready to drive again. And um, by that time, the rain was just uh, pretty light. I mean, it was that quick and violent storm. So I got back on the road. It was still windy, probably 30 miles per hour. I got off after about 10 miles and headed west, southwest. And I never had another problem that day. Semis passing me, anything. that It just felt like I was driving one solid unit. And so the key to those things is adjust it with enough resistance to, so that when a semi pulls by you, that draft from them doesn't push your trailer over towards the shoulder, um, and thus kind of in a different direction than your vehicle, truck in my case. And, um, just that alone is worth avoiding because that's a really uncomfortable feeling. So if you get it on there with the right tension and then have it loose enough to where when you make turns, or right, right angle turns, there's no resistance because um, you, you don't want that problem. So that, that's what I did and it worked out great. And now I'm gonna, I used it on the way back from that trip uh, I don't remember any heavy winds, but I was hauling. I was doing like 76 a good part of the way, which is probably not recommended with a casita for the sake of the wheel bearings and all. But uh, I'm guilty. That's what I did. Uh, as it turned out, uh, you know, no problem. And I know on the way down there, it was largely due to that sway bar. And the hat I'm wearing helped a lot. So that's my sway bar story. I'd recommend, uh, you can get that kit for about $90 from Casita if you order the trailer and they'll have it all put together for you. Or you can order one and retrofit it on your trailer and your um, um, uh, hitch. <laughs> yeah, hitch. And um, you can retrofit it on there. It, it, it comes with a kit has a couple of extra um, hitch ball fittings and it's got uh, plates to mount them with and stuff. So uh, that's doable. Uh, you can probably get the cheap, uh, the kit cheaper, 20, 30 bucks cheaper somewhere else, but it's 90 from Cosita and they do all the labor on it. So I'm glad I had that done. I'm glad I ordered that when I got my trailer that was one of those things where I said, well, I want to have all the safety stuff, you know. I mean, I'm not going to be a freak about it, but I want to have something in case I need it. And that one was in case I needed it. I did. I found out it's not a big deal uh, to put that on. You put one end on the hitch ball. The other end, there's a ball mounted to the side of the frame on the casita. You pop the cotter pin into each one so it stays on there, but it's still is movable movable and um you get you get it adjusted for tension and it'll it it'll really give you a feeling of security because you know a long drive and just just semis going by it alone and that thing starts swaying and your truck doesn't um this kind of equals it out where uh, the resistance is um, absorbed by both equally at the same time, or that's the way it feels. So 90 bucks, well spent. I'm glad I got it. It's never, I'm not going to let it uh, sit around anymore. I'm going to use it. My advice is for a small trailer, you know, and Casita's 2,500 pounds, no matter what size vehicle you're pulling it with, um, to get a sway control bar. It, it's worth it. Uh, it takes two minutes to put on and, you know, a minute and a half to unhook it. Really simple and a great way to go. So that's uh, that's today's video. Uh, this is Tommy Rance RV. I'm signing out on this one. We'll see you soon.